just had Ronald Pratap on champion. What a champion. He started his own business a couple of years ago and he's pushed through um, out the other side. He's had some trials and tribulations and he shares he shares what it's been like to start his own business from scratch. He came out of a big institution, um, had a go out of himself and he, he just, it's a really good example of why, why people do advice. And, um, if, if you're out there and you're, you're sort of, um, struggling to sort of stay engaged with what you're doing, Ronald, Ronald's a great example of, um, really pushing through and sticking, sticking to what you really love and, um, why you're doing it. So, uh, enjoy the podcast. This episode is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Launching nearly 20 years ago, this ASX-listed company is ranked number one for overall platform functionality and user satisfaction by investment trends for the past three years. As the financial advice landscape changes, it's important now more than ever to embrace new technology and enhance the way you do business. With this change comes your chance to innovate, explore new perspectives, and realize new efficiencies. NetWealth is here to support you on this journey by providing you market-leading technology, excellent customer support, and expertise to help you innovate in your business. Visit the NetWealth website to learn more and get the PDS which clients should read before making a decision. Products issued by NetWealth Investments Limited. Mr. Ronald Pratap. Pratap, Pratap. Got it, mate. Yes. Pratap. Yes. First time. <laughs> How you doing, man? Good, mate. Yourself? Really good. It's so good to have you on. Thanks, mate. You've been one of the... Um the first drinking buddies of XY. I mean, um, one of the first members of XY. Yeah, uh, members, yeah. <laughs> That's it, mate. <laughs> yeah, you used to, like, when did we first, what was the first event you came to? I think it might have been a towel event. Might have been one of the towel yeah. events. Was that we... the one where we'd, like, oversupplied, or, like, there was too many beers and we had to drink them all, or? I think it was the Oh, they were kicking around. us out. Yeah, because cause there wasn't enough beers. <laughs> then we had to go downstairs. So oh, well, we flipped that around for the next couple, that's for sure. <laughs> that's it, mate. <laughs> so how's, how's things, mate? Yeah, good, mate. So um, I think I was on the XY um, podcast probably when I f- into the first few months of starting my business. So it's probably a couple of years now. So August was two years of uh, the business, RP Wealth Management. Yeah. Um, it's been quite good. Um, still in business. Haven't had to take a part-time job, which is that's always a good, good sign, you know. So, yeah, you started, I think you had a certain target market. Is that, I think you were really, were you working with tradies before? Well, uh, the blue collar workers are, uh, and self-employed clients are my domain. I guess that's where I'm dealing with a lot. I guess the referrals that are coming through from accountants, mortgage brokers are more in that space. And I think for me, that's who I get along with quite well. But at the same time, I'm, st- I'm doing a lot within the retiree space as well. Okay. You know, I see a lot of uh, stuff happening in the millennial space in terms of advisors trying to get into that. And it is a tough market to crack. It's something that I do want to get into. But at the moment, you know, the bread and butter is there with the retirees, the blue collar workers that, you know, have these large amounts of income and but don't know how to structure their superannuation payments, don't know how to structure their assets, oh, sorry, their um, income and, you know, putting it into buckets and setting themselves up for the future. So you, you did mention like talking about these clients and where they're coming from. There was, there was a plural use with like mortgage brokers and accountants and referral partners. What's going on there? Have you, have you managed to sort of get a few up in your group? Yeah. So I guess um, you probably would have known, I think when I was last on the podcast, I was a member of a BNI group. Mm. Which and everyone's got these this philosophy or not a philosophy but their opinion about how B and I works for them. Some of it works, some of it doesn't. They've gone to groups, you know. You, you, I've I've gone to some groups and it feels like it's a bit like you know robots and it feel it's got a bit of a cult fo- kind of following. But the group that I'm with, they're a great bunch of people, and I ended up becoming the president of the B and I chapter. So that's the one that you started with a couple of years ago. And that's then right. So through. I Donald Trumped it somehow, and then I got in there and became president after about what, six months. Populist. Uh, <laughs> Uh, voting was it? <laughs> oh, something like that, mate. Yeah, we won't get into it too you much. You started bribing, bribing them? <laughs> no, there's no, there's no bribing, mate. Okay. There's no bribing. You just use your personality, and then things things happen. Oh, they like <laughs> you. Much that. like being an advisor, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I think um, the era of uh, using your personality to get clients may be coming to an end. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I think you got to back it up these days as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What What are you seeing coming through in relation to that? Like, what's what are the pain points coming through to your business? Um, I think with this whole Royal Commission, you know, it did 
It's definitely scary when you're starting a business or when you're within the first few years of your business hearing about Royal Commission. I guess for me, I came out of the banks, you know, coming out of ANZ and MLC world where you always had someone backing you up, whether it's your manager, whether it's the CEO, whether it's the organization itself. Then you hear the Royal Commission and then it's it's very scary stuff. But at you're the like, same, no one can back me up. Yeah. That's exactly right. It's you. You know, if, if something happens, then you have to drop everything to protect yourself. But I think if you're setting out the right foundations and do things that you know and you can genuinely say that you'd give that type of advice to your friends, your family, your loved ones, and you can do it for your clients, then you're going to be on uh, in a good track to, I guess, set yourself up or set your business up. And I think with the Royal Commission, it started making people think about, you know, what is their advisor doing for them? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen my advisor in three years. Now I'm getting a letter sent that says I've paid $1,000 a year for the last three years. And it's starting to make people think about, okay, maybe I want someone that's more engaged or maybe I can see someone that's, I'm going to get more value out of. So for me, the Royal Commission has actually helped my business grow in terms of getting clients out there that are disgruntled with their existing advisors. Oh, so Ronald out there stealing other advisors' business. No, I, I make that call. <laughs> hey, you're not taking them. They're just it's, coming to you. I'm not paying three times. That's what I'm not yeah. doing. <laughs> so, so what's the, what are the discussions around this? Like what? So obviously you've had your clients. Have any of your clients had um, any, have you had any tough discussions that um, they have come up because of the Royal Commission? No, I think um, in, in my first meeting and in our review meetings, I kind of um, start talking about what's happening in the current climate. I guess we have our conversation about what's affecting my client, but then I have my discussion about what's affecting the, the financial planning world. And, you know, clients aren't stupid. They see the news and it's everywhere you go to. Like, you know, you see it on your news feed, you see it on, you know, social media, it's, it's happening. So I guess I start to address those issues. And for me, it's uh, a part of my value proposition is this is the reason why I left the corporate world. I left the corporate world because we were having a sales meeting every Monday morning. When you're a financial advisor, you're supposed to have a sales meeting. You know, that, that culture, I understand at the end of the day, you need to make money for the business, but when you're calling it a sales meeting and you, you've got targets and you know, it starts changing the way that you, why you be became an advisor mm. at the end of the day, it is about, you know, being profitable, but uh, there's two ways to go about it. And I guess, you know, starting my business was because I wanted to, I didn't feel like a financial advisor anymore. I felt like a car salesman yeah. at, at the end of the day. You know, I started this business because I want to help people. I want it to be profitable, but at the, at the same time, I'm not restricted to say writing a product for a certain company. What's your, what is the metric you look at for performance of your business? Um, and that's probably where in the last 12 months is where I'm focusing my attention on, you know, processes, systems. How do I, now that I'm by myself, you know, how, what's the targets that I set for myself? So the good thing is, is, and I've probably spoken about it before, but um, with my licensee, the head of my licensee, yep. Arthur, yep. he honestly, in the last two years, if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be where I am today because, you know, we hold quarterly meetings. So we yep. sit down two hours every quarter, talk about just the business planning. And that's on not on top of all the other discussions that we have in, in between that. That's you know, awesome. I'll call him at nine o'clock at night to talk about some issue that I might have and where else can you call it the head of a licensee to talk about issues like that? That's, that's really good. You don't, you really don't hear, um, many people talk about their licensees like yeah. that and, and of that sort of, um, support. Really. Yeah. He, you know, we help each other out. He'll get new recruits to call me and to talk about my experience mm -hmm. and then, you know, I'll, he'll help me out by taking those calls at nine o'clock at night when he probably shouldn't be or sending an email, you know, we're usually emailing back and forth at night, but at the same time, you know, he gets, what he gets is someone coming into the, into the licensee that fits the model. Mm. For me, I don't get anything out of it. I just like who I'm dealing with. And at the same time, if I can change processes and, um, I guess systems in the back end, that's going to help my business and help the licensee. That's all. It, that's just going to benefit everyone. Totally. Totally. Oh, that's, that's really cool. I'm yeah. sorry. Cause, um, yeah, you, what, what, what was that corporate background? What was the, yeah. So for me, you know, what got you so disgruntled about the corporate world? I wasn't really disgruntled because, you know, I had free reign to do whatever I wanted to do, mm. but at the end of the day, I like a challenge, you know, I like being able to always have a goal and then go to that next step. But I felt like as clients were coming in, you know, you, you're signing up these clients, you're putting them into a product. At the end of the day, the product was the focus, even though, you know, it probably shouldn't be, it probably, it, it was for the bank. So you're putting them into the product, then you're going on to the next client. And every time you hit your targets, then your targets for next year are going up. Mm. So if you're doing good, 
your your target's going to go up. But if you're doing bad, you're kind of kicked out. So yeah, you, you, you're it's pretty aligned to um, certain outcomes. That's that's right. So you know, it, every every year it was just that I was kind of growing the business for someone else because at the Whilst we were under the corporate world, we were still an aligned dealer group. Mm. So we're still under the, uh, I guess, an umbrella, but I was still told to go out there and find my own referral partners. I was still go out, told to go out there and do the prospecting. Mm. And, you know, whilst it was, I, I did that for about three to four years, it helped me get the skills I needed to mm. start my own business. How different was, because a lot of people... Well, that's one of the propositions of a larger group that you're going to get, you're not going to have to prospect as much. Yeah. How, what's, what is the difference between having your own business and, and that existence for the advisors out there that might still be employed? Yeah. Um, thinking about going out, what sort of activity changed and, or was it, were you doing the same activity? You just yeah. get to, just got to keep all the spoils. Uh, I think for me, it changed a lot more where whilst I was told to go do the prospecting and, you know, knock on doors, get in front of people, you know, get these relationships, I also still had a book of clients. Yep. So I was still, I had that security where that book of clients was there. I could identify opportunities in there, you know, and I didn't have to worry too much about um, the relationship side of things mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, I still had a salary and I still had a book yep. of clients. Yeah, yeah. Now going on, out on my own, I started from scratch. So I left, you know, 400 clients to start off, to, from zero. So when you start off with zero and I just completed a Europe trip for eight weeks. So, you know, probably not the best thing to do before you start drain, a holiday. Drain the, uh, yeah, the bank account. Drain the bank account. <laughs> hey, just but builds the, um, I think the... <laughs> for me, it was the fear of not having money yeah. is going to push me to succeed. Yeah. So, you know, I, I wrote down a list of friends and family members that I could just, you know, proposition what I do. And it wasn't gi giving everyone a call and getting on the phone and annoying him because you, then you're going to be that annoying cousin, that annoying mate that no one wants to talk to. Was it the sympathy play? Like I just started. <laughs> <laughs> it was more of a Facebook message, but okay. it was a it was a same Facebook message, but it was, you know, I, I, I knew what my friends and family, what stage of their life they were at. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I hit on super or insurance or you're self-employed, you know, look, think about this. This is where I can help you. So, you know, I had a kind of a, a email template for each one and I just Facebook message. And then maybe like a month later, I just, or a couple of weeks later, I just checked in again. And if they didn't want it, then that's fine. But that's how I started. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it was just, you know, doing, you, you've seen that I've done a lot of stuff with my blogging, LinkedIn. And I've got more people on my LinkedIn than I've got on my Facebook. I don't even know. I don't have that many people on there until someone said, and you know, you've got over a thousand people. It's like, once you start building your LinkedIn profile, mm -hmm. then everyone just wants to add you. You've got the property developers hitting you up. You have people that, you know, want to help your business. Or what, what's, the, what's the process you go through or what has been your LinkedIn um, process? If an advisor not doing anything on LinkedIn, how? Yeah. How so for me, that? a lot of people, you know, talk about this SEO stuff and SME. I think at the end of the day, you what you need to start doing is start linking everything back to your website. So I, I guess it's quite hard as well because depending on what area you're going into, you're also competing with a lot of other financial advisors. Mm. So when I originally started my business, I said, you know, Western Sydney, I'm going to, I'm going to take over Western Sydney or that, that that's, that's where I want to su succeed. And I said, you know, I can base myself from Parramatta and then kind of branch out from there. But then when I got into it a lot more, I found that, you know, I'm still competing with another, maybe 200 advisors in that, you know, Parramatta and surrounding mm. area. If you go into the city, you still got another thousand advisors. Mm -hmm. So if you're putting up a blog or you're doing anything, you've still got, you're going to be on, you know, the... 10th to 50th page of Google before you start getting any traction. So then I started moving out more into the Western, Southwestern suburbs. So, you know, looking at the MacArthur region, the Penrith type of region, and then focusing my attention there. So whenever I was doing um, anything with, uh, I guess, putting up any blogs or putting up any um, uh, videos, I was always using those keywords for those surrounding suburbs. And then, okay. you know, getting that my SEO rating went up just, and you were able to measure all that, is it? I wasn't able to measure it, but I just kept Googling myself all the time or Googling myself oh, so you, on other you people. You individually got your own SEO rating up by Googling yeah, No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but I would check on other people. So I, I was just like, you know, type in, um, you know, MacArthur Financial Planning or type in, type in something financial planning. I don't want to give too much away here. Mm. <laughs> but, but, you know, doing those things is um, help. If you, as, as long as you start linking everything back to your website, whether it's going to be on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, it, it, it Google's going to be notified that your website's getting updated as well. And people are going from that to your website. So for example, I might put up a, a LinkedIn, uh, 
a blog, but I might only show the first paragraph of the blog and then say, you know, to read on, click onto this link mm. and that's going to take you to my website. Yep. But if I don't have that link on there and I just tell you to read the blog, chances are you're probably not going to read all of it mm. and chances are you're going to read it, but it's well, not going to do anything. To yeah. There's no, there's nothing to go to my website for it as well. So you've got to create a, either a call to action or if, if you're not going to get the client, then you're also going to create some type of, you know, traffic to your website as well. And it, it might be 10 times before that client comes back to you, but they've seen your website. They've seen your social media. It's like a shop front. Mm. At the end of the day, we're doing all we, that we do on online because we don't, it's, it's a shop front to show that, you know, we do have a reputation. Advisor ratings is another one that I use and I still get referrals from advisor ratings. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so those type of things all help, you know, the, the Google ratings, um, sorry, the, the Google reviews at the same time, the client testimonials on advisor ratings, mm -hmm. um, on Facebook, you know, I send an email to every client that I do some work with. And if you're happy with your advice, if you're a legend, you'll put a review on Facebook. If you're an extra legend, you know, you put it on, you'll copy and paste it and <laughs> chuck it into Google. Okay. And if you're a, a step above a legend, then you'll go on to advisor ratings and fill out this survey. That's so good. At what yeah. point in the process do you do that? Um, r right, right at the, the end. I know some people do it at different points, but mm. for me, it's like, you know, I've done all the work. I've implemented it. Gonna you know, prove I've kept it. You, yeah, I've, 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 you know, I've kept you up to date with everything. If you're happy with that service, you know, ch chuck it on because at the end of the day, I want genuine people to show that, you know, mm. th they're happy with the work that I've done. And if there's anything wrong, you know, what can what can I change in my yep. process in order to make it a little bit better for you? Yeah, that's really good. What ab what about uh, refer like uh, asking for referrals? Um, I. Do do that straight away. Um, not straight away, sorry. Uh, at that process as well. I'm a Ronald. <laughs> My name's Ronald. You got anyone else I should be talking yeah. to? <laughs> so for, for me, it's, um, uh, I say, you know, I don't, I'm not out there advertising. You know, I'm not out there like one of the banks putting my net brand out there. So for me, I rely heavily on word of mouth. If you think I've done, done a good job, then, you know, the best way that you could say thank you is by referring me to your friend or family member or someone that you think that might be in the same situation as you that I could help. Yeah, um, and, and look, it doesn't happen straight away. It, it might, it might take months, it might take a year before that client feels comfortable because at the end of the day, and this is how I think with my referral partners, you're putting their reputation on the line. So if they refer, um, m me to their fa friends or family members, I'm a reflection of them. Mm. And at the same time, when you think about your referral partners, when you're getting a referral, you've got to think that you're a reflection of that referral partner. So you've got to treat that referral like gold. And so that, I think that's how organically I've grown my business and why the relationships that I've had with mortgage brokers and um, accountants have started to work because, you know, now I sit in an accountant's office, uh, I've bought the uh, mortgage broker in that's part of the B&I group. And then, you know, at the end of the day, number one is about the clients, but you know, afterwards, every after, every Friday afternoon, we're cracking a beer open, you know, playing darts and we can all have fun at the same time. What would you say, like I've, I've been to a couple of BNIs, um, mainly as guests actually, it's quite yeah. an interesting thing. Oh, welcome. Uh, please uh, present to everyone, <laughs> all, all 40 people. Um, but it's a good experience. What, what would you say to the people that, um, I guess have a bit of an issue with the metrics or the account, um, the number counting of the referrals between people in the BNI so that that framework where how many referrals have you given out, how many yeah. you've received, all that sort of stuff. What what would you say around that? Look, the, don't go into there thinking that you're just going to get business. And and this is not just for BNI, this is for any networking group. If you're part of that, that group, don't expect that you're just going to get referrals because you're a financial advisor. It takes a lot of trust and it takes a lot of, um, I think, the, sending your message across because not everyone knows what a financial advisor does. When someone told me, you know, 10 years ago, mentioned financial planning. I had no idea what a financial advisor was. So don't expect other people to know what it is. You've got to kind of continue to spread the, your, your message uh, about what you do, how you add value. And then, you know, s people will start to refer to you. The way I did it was, is that when I first went into BNI, I started pretty, pretty quick into setting up the business thing. I set up the business in August by November, December, I was a full fledged member. Um, and then June was, I was president. So it all came quick to me. But, yeah, so what I did was, is that I needed people to do my flyers, to do my business cards, to do my website, to do my, um, uh, I, I use services for lending, etc. So 
who did so I go to? It's a great to? opportunity. It was the people in connection. Yeah, with because them. the idea of B and I is it's givers gain. So if you give a referral to someone in the group, they're going to feel like they need to give you a referral back. Mm. So instead of going outside my group, I'd use everyone in my group because that creates that sense of trust and also I'm confident to use them. So they're going to be confident to use my mm. services as well. Um, and within that six months, I built up a pretty good reputation, which is, I think, why I became it, uh, being president of that being being I chapter, and then it was down to eleven members. We grew it up to twenty two. Now the the uh, ch chapter president of that is the mortgage broker I deal with. So you know we're still working quite close together. It's a, it's a great group, and I think also the dynamic that you got to look for is is that I've gone to other groups, and you know you got forty five year olds, fifty five year olds that. They're kind of, you know, 10 to 20 years into their business. They might already have relationships with other financial advisors. So I think why our group work is that we have a lot of, um, you know, 25 to 35 year olds that are mm. within the their newer first businesses. Year, yeah. Newer businesses. So they're just as, they're happy to grow your business while growing theirs because they know that reciprocal arrangement as well. Mm. It's not about putting joint ventures into place straight away, not about, you know, money splits or anything like that. All my best relationships mm. are just from referrals back and forth. Yep. I have no joint ventures in place. Now we're starting to have those discussions, but for the last two years, I've just grown off organic referrals, no, no money splits. And when you can sit in front of the client and genuinely say, I'm not getting anything from this referral, mm -hmm. makes the client feel a lot better as well. Yeah, totally. How, how do you think your, your advice propositions changed over the last couple of years, like yeah. since starting out? Obviously, sort of heard a bit about what you were doing before, but um, mm. how's that changed as you've gotten more experience in your own practice? And Yeah. Um, I think there's a couple of things there where one is, you know, financially at the start, you can only do what you're limited to in terms of, you know, you started the business, you put all this money in, but you don't have the systems, the process, everything Can't spend in place. On that stuff. That's right. You know, and everybody's a client. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 you're not really choosy at that point in time. <laughs> Everyone that picks up the phone and talks to you for a bit, that's, you know, that's potentially a client. But now, now I can, you know, honestly say that, you know, I've turned away some clients that are just, you know, chasing returns because at the end of the day, that's one thing I will never guarantee, especially in this climate. Um, you know, the only thing I can guarantee is that I'll give you, if you call me or email me, I'll give you a call within 24 hours or email you back some type of contact. That's the only thing I can guarantee. Mm. Um, and I'll explain to you if something goes wrong, you know, I'll be there for the good times and the bad times. I can't guarantee markets, but I can tell you why or what happened at that time. What, what about um, like the, tar have you developed a tar more of a target market over time or? Yeah. So I think, um, you know, I still like that retiree space. I do, I do quite well in the, you know, Centrelink advice and maximizing their assets in retirement. Mm. I know a lot of um, other people are focusing more on that millennial space, but I, that's something that I haven't got down pat yet. Mm. And I think over time, that's what I'm trying to focus on, you know, bringing mm. in tools like My Prosperity, trying to use those type of tools and then bringing in systems that work good in the back end with My Prosperity. So I can maybe monitor that a bit more, but also, I'm not. I'm more of an adv an advisor, not a coach. But I want to be in that space or get someone into that space. Mm. So that's the type. Have of you jumped on the the new uh, training platform? I, I've online. seen. I've seen the emails. I've clicked on it. So you hey. probably got <laughs> you got notified that Ronald clicked on it. But uh. yeah, well, we're waiting for you to register because <laughs> yeah. there's some there's some good courses there that could help you get I into did, that coaching space. I did check it, and it's something that I do want to look into. And it's about you know starting to outsource as much as I can to start giving myself time to, in terms of the education piece as well, mm. because at the end of the day, it's always a learning experience. And if you're not changing, you're going to be one of the advisors that are going to be pushed out of this industry if you're mm. not, you know, changing with the times. So, so on the education bit, I've, I've got a bit of a, I don't know, perspective on, I guess what, um, it really depends on what, uh, curriculum comes out of that Yep, because, um, there's a, as you're saying, a lot of a lot of where you're trying to go is actually really not in the direction of what traditionally financial planning education covers. Mm. So a lot of that technical stuff, super valuable. But if you had to choose between being a technical specialist and a great coach just around um, people's money, what are you going to choose? Probably the coach. The exactly. coach, yeah, for me. So, and then I think a lot of advisors are really um, – yeah, that's, I think if you ask, go out there and ask people that question. Mm. And I think that's the problem with, with what's coming through with FASIA is that most people would go, well, I'd rather be a coach because 
that's where I start. That's where the relationships really exactly. build. It's not. It's not. I'm. I'm the specialist. I know this. Do this strategy because it's going to be great for you. Yeah. And you can get great outcomes, and it's and it's and it's not a bad thing. It's just not as effective at achieving um, behavioural change and yep. like transforming people. Exactly. And if you could be the most technically gifted person, but if you don't have that, you know, that coaching side of you, that personality, and getting people in the front door, no one's going to know about you and mm. your technical skills because you've got to get yourself out there. You've got to, you know, like I, I was talking to you about before, like, you know, I do these videos and I do these blogs and I do all these things. And, you know, at first they seem cringeworthy, but you have to do it because no one's going to find out about you unless you put yourself out there. Exactly. And when you're starting the business, if you've got no marketing budget, that's the only way to do it. You've got a phone. You've got, you know, it's got audio, so you can do it. You can track yourself on live. You can do whatever. And as cringeworthy as it is, you just got to do it. Yeah, and it gets. I, I've got. I don't have the gets best. Gets more head. comfortable. It, it doesn't get any more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but I think with the combination of, um, I guess, B and I as well. Um, you know, I stand up every week. And I, I'm not the tallest like guy. Mate, yeah, sort of I'm not the tallest guy in the world. So for me, phone books for you. <laughs> <laughs> mate, I, I, I stand on the chair. But you know, to stand up every week, telling these you know 25 business owners, you know, and, and running the meeting, and then you know, organizing like talking about referrals and all, it just helps me do those videos as well. Mm. So I think um, if you're not comfortable doing that type of stuff, you know, join a networking group or go to Toastmasters or something because mm. it definitely does help. When it translates through to how you're able to engage with clients. I guess. That, that's exactly right. Yeah. You, you're definitely um, learning leadership qualities and sort of yeah. how to persuade. Yeah. And even when I go to networking events, you know, because of B and I, um, for me has worked because people, it, uh, people are always searching for chapters and stuff. So when I go to a networking event, they already know that I'm the president of that thing. So, or, or I don't have to introduce myself too much as well. And I think if you're going to focus on opening a business as well, you know, do your research in terms of the area, because there's a lot of areas now that are, they're, they're shifting demographics. So there's more, you know, um, younger people moving into certain areas. So if you're going to do that, you know, don't say you're just going to focus, you're going you're to be in one certain area. You've got to look really at where you're going to start targeting. Well, well, I'm on that, like locality wise, like a lot of a lot of people are moving to the digital space. Are you um, are you engaging people over on like video? Yeah, no, I'm I'm not. I've heard of a few podcasts where they, they are doing that. For me, I think the the personal interaction is where yep. where it's working for me. Yep. Um, I think you know down the track as I potentially build up my business more and maybe get other people involved and that's where I can start going into that space. At the moment, it's not something that I'm, uh, I'm doing. I, I, I do have clients interstate, yep. um, but they're more so, they'll come into Sydney, you know, we'll catch up, we'll do our yearly review or six monthly review. Um, on some, in some instances, I go out and see them. Yep. Um, but uh, at the moment, yeah, everything's done via either phone, internet, but no, no video chats at the moment. But I've heard of a couple of uh, things that I might start putting into my arsenal as well. <laughs> totally. There's plenty of advisors out there using um, things like Zoom uh, to, yeah, some, some like uh, half of their business is done yeah. digitally like that. And so. I think it's great. It's just something that I haven't done myself. I'm great at, um, you give me a template, I'm great at tweaking it, mm. but if to start from scratch... Yep. I always need, you know, a helping hand there or so someone to come and, you know, put that system in place. So that's that's where now that I'm a lot more comfortable with my business, that's the space that I'm getting into, you know, changing processes, changing um, systems, changing area or how I can give advice in order to uh, change with the times as well. What do you think, like, the advice process is a huge beast. Yeah. So there's so many things to cover. And it's, it's really one of the, like, it, it in itself makes advice really um, difficult to wrangle and um, maintain consistency and meet all the requirements around it. Yeah. If you're going to what what particular area have you identified as like the biggest pain point? Where do you where do you feel the most pain? Well, yeah. Uh where my licensee started off from was a lot of SMSF advice. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of stuff around, um, you know, providing that self-managed super fund advice and that's what they were known for. So, you know, I went in there thinking, you know, I'm going to set up my business and go down that space. But then as I looked into it more and then you get all these emails about, you know, legislation changes, reg uh, regulatory changes and just with the commissions and everything, I thought, you know, if I can avoid getting commissions or doing anything like that from the start, 
I'm not going to, you know, start getting a couple of commissions and go, you know what, this is quite good. I'm going to, I'm going to keep doing self-managed super funds and get, keep getting these property commissions. And, and so I avoided it. Mm. And to this day I can say, you know, I haven't got any type of property commissions or anything, but I've, I think that's the pain area where I find that once you go into that area and if, you know, things start changing, it's going to be very hard for you to then get back out of it because it's a complicated area at the start. Mm. But then once they start, you know, taking and stripping away those commissions. The reimbursement for... Um, you know, property develop. Yeah, I've yeah. got property developers hitting me up every week, and oh, they'll be getting more and more desperate. As, yeah, because um, I was looking at the graph yesterday that five percent drop in Sydney. Yeah, um, eight, eight, I think eighth month um, in a row where yeah, yeah declining property it's not, prices. It's not great for clearing stock, is it? Uh, definitely not. So that's why those getting discounts there. you're getting at the peak of the market are definitely getting better. That's for sure. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> Land starting to hold more. You know, you, you've got uh, and. Because in the area that I'm in, I I speak with a lot of the real estate agents as well, you know, that properties are on the market for longer people that are selling, you know, having open homes, they're not doing one open home and then selling their house. Mm. They're doing, you know, four or five open homes before they get, you know, two, three people in the door. So how's it, how's it impacted your, uh, your clients, the property? Because, because like, I like being as of like, you go back six months, like you can't, um, before, like before the last six months. People would not could not comprehend that property prices could go down. Yeah. Essentially. So how's the conversation changed? I've always said that, and I've never been you know a property focused person. You know, I've always said you know, asset look at different asset classes. It depends on your your goals, your objectives, and then align the um, investment to that. And but I've never been a property person myself. And the, what the one thing I say is that our generation has never seen a property crash. So all they see is they see, it, you know, housing as the same as putting your money in a bank account, and it's never going to lose money. That's what our generation sees. But I say, you know, if you if you, I always bring out a graph and say if you really look at um, uh, markets from you know 1980 up until today. Shares have, have outperformed property. It's only that you don't value a house on a day by day basis. If you start, uh, you know, valuing a house on a day by day basis, the volatility is going to be a lot higher than what it is on, you know, the share markets that we have, but people don't do that. You know, when do you value a house? You value it maybe once a year, not even. So when, if you're going to do that every few years, then you're going to notice the, the growth there, but we what we've had in Australia in the last, you know, what, eight years or so plus. Oh, plus, yeah. Yeah, is something that's unprecedented. Like it's ne- it hasn't happened. So it's we're just, you know, riding this bubble. And I've always said it's not going to last forever. And What do the, you think is going to happen, right? Well, we're seeing, we're starting to see what's happened. But And the, when you look at the government, the government aren't making, uh, they're making regulations tighter. So it's not helping the housing market. It's also starting to lead to mm. further decline. Yeah. I personally think that, um, yeah, we're in a bit of trouble. Um, and it's not like, um, and no one, no one's able to control it. There's, there's so many elements coming through with, uh, the Royal Commission that could, um, like the banking system in terms of the requirements for lending. I don't know. You'd, you'd be dealing closely with your mortgage broker, tightening of requirements, all of a sudden clients that you thought could get, um, home loans probably can't get them anymore. Um, and that, that stuff's just the pre-action from the banks before anything comes out of the Royal Commission, so. yep. wait until so- something comes through. Um, just general um, affordability. Yeah. There's so many. And, and I've always said to my clients, you know, property is a long-term strategy. Don't go into a property thinking that you're going to flip a property, you know, after two years, after three years. You know, look at it as a 10-year minimum investment. If you're going to, if you're, you're looking at purchasing an investment property, look at the income side of things as well and the average growth rate after 10 years. Because if you look at it like that, then, you know, property is still a good investment. But if you're looking to flip a house, like, yeah, because, yeah, people have heard, oh, you know, my friend bought a house and they made a hundred thousand dollars in, in two years, or they've made a couple of hundred thousand. That's, we're not, we don't have that anymore. That's not happening. Mm. If anything, you're probably going to lose a hundred thousand in the first two years. So just think about that before you go into the investment, because think of it, and, and we, ha- you know, we speak about to the clients, like we always align how long they want to invest for. And then we choose, you know, assets based around that. Mm. So I've never had any difficulty having that property conversation because if a client's very passionate about the property, then I send it to the professionals as well. You know, I've got a, uh, I always say to a client, think of yourself as a celebrity. I'm 
and I'm the person that ma manages all the relationships. So I have your mortgage broker, your accountant, you know, your property guy, your lawyer, anything you need, you come to me and I'll put you in touch with those people. And when <laughs> I love it. That's a great one. <laughs> Your client being the celebrity, and yeah. you're their, uh, their I'm manager. not their agent. <laughs> you're their agent. You used to actually. You used, did you used to DJ or something? That's why these headphones are. I, I'm used to it being down here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> DJ Ronald. DJ Ron P. <laughs> <laughs> have you done? Have you done any more lately? Oh mate, I left the thug life, so um, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's all. Uh, yeah, uh, I think I, I started handing it to my brother. And then my brother started getting a little bit too drunk at the parties and then I was still charging the same as what I was charging, but he wasn't performing the same. So my <laughs> reputation went kind of down after that. Well, if there's any any decks at the XY Advisor Christmas party, oh, maybe mate, we I'll can- I'll jump uh, right on. We'll come out of here and stuff there. Ron, any, anything you'd like to um, leave the community with or share or any anything you're working on that you like um, like to share with? Yeah. Um, I think for the reason I do this stuff with XY Advisor and with, um, you know, with I, I like to help younger advisors that are getting into the industry is because people gave me the time of day. And if people gave me the time of day and X, Y also helped me a lot with the questions I have, you know, chucking a question into the group, getting it answered, helping each other out. I think that's how our community needs to grow in terms of the advice. We don't have the best reputation and it's slowly getting better, but if we can all help each other out, there's enough clients out there that we can all kind of, um, you know, share at the same time. We don't have to be cutthroat about anything, but, um, Everything, if you're thinking about going or setting up your own business, forget everything, you know, because once you start it, it all changes. All the referral partners that said that they were going to, you know, be there when I set up my business were all gone. I said, I had whole, all new referral partners, all the business planning that I said, you know, I was going to get this many clients by this point of time. And I was going to get this many clients by this point. How do you know you're going to get that many clients? Like if you, you can't count on that, you've just got to, you know, You've just got to do strategies and if they work, continue to do it. If it doesn't work, fob it off and then move on to the next one. Mm. It, when you're in a financial advisor you're not, and you start your own business, financial planning is probably 40% of what you do. All of a sudden, you're you know, a business owner, then you're an accountant, then you're a social media expert, then you've got to do all these things that come with being a business owner. So, you know, don't tear yourself down because, you know- I guess I've, the bookkeeping. That's, oh, mate. That's the fun part, isn't it? Mate, the first few years when you're trying to run off Excel spreadsheets and stuff because you're trying to minimize expenses. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's quite hard. And then and then you've got enough money to go, you know what, pay your accountant a little bit more to do everything for you. It's a lot, it's a bit easier. But, you know, there's there's still times I sit there going, what have I done? You know, why did I do this? So, it, it was about July this year where I said, you know, I was thinking, you know, by the time 2024 comes, I'm just going to pack up. I'm just going to sell my business and, and give it off. And then I sat down with Arthur and he, you know, looked at my numbers and he go, you'd be an idiot to do it. Like you're doing everything right. If you, if you're doing everything right and you know, you've got the, if you've got that, you know, your focus, I think, um, you're going to succeed in this industry and all these changes are happening for the better and the good advisors going to, you know, come out. Absolutely. There's going to be, um, there's going to be a lot less advisors. So you being an AR is, uh, it's going to be quite the, Unique attribute. <laughs> That's it, mate. Uh, mate, you've, you've come this far, so it'd be, it'd be sad to see you. Uh, yeah. Your... And valuations are going to come down, so there's no point in um, trying to sell the business back. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> definitely much more of a revenue business than a capital play. That's yeah. It. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Well, on that note, Ronald, mate, mate thanks for coming along. Thanks a lot. Yeah. And um, you guys are doing a great thing here. I think um, XY, you know, I, I think I, I, I went into the, that X, XY group when it was at a few hundred members and it's just blown up and it's just really helping, I guess, the advice community. So I think it's really good stuff that you do. Guys Thanks, man. Clayton. <laughs> <laughs>